So hi, I'll be explaining the algorithm and the environment part of our final year project. So ART is a reinforcement learning based approach for optimizing traffic flow. In order to simulate the entire traffic environment, we've used a SUMO model, which is simultaneous urban mobility model. Now in the SUMO model, we've modeled the system for a particular crossroads. So as you can see, there's traffic coming in in all directions. Now initially, I'll be showing you what the current traffic system the world does. It follows a cyclic order in which signals are open in a cyclic manner irrespective of vehicle queue raw time of the vehicle. The issue with the existing system is that it's all very static. There is no dynamic element to it. Hence we aim to tackle this aspect of this problem and we've, in order to do so we've adopted a reinforcement learning based approach. So now I'll be showing you the training phase of our project. So we we ran the reinforcement learning algorithm for close to 100 episodes and it took close to 10 hours to train. As you can see the same crossroads model is opened up on the right and episode 1 out of 100 is training. After each episode the hyperparameters are re-evaluated, reassessed and are tuned in order to get a better reward and a lesser queue length. As you can see the same system is being run over and over again and this will run for 100 episodes. Now, now let me show you the plot of the queue length and the reward so that we can understand how our training has been performed and how well our testing also has results. Now this is the part of the queue length for 100 episodes. So as you can see initially the queue length has been pretty high for the first couple of episodes and then gradually after the hyperparameter tuning has happened the queue length has smoothed out at around 90-100 episodes. Now another thing to note here is that since the curve is smoothed out there is no overfitting also occurring. Now let, to look a little bit about the reward. You can see that the same can be applied for the reward also. The first couple of episodes, the reward is very low. I mean, we suspect a negative reward, so the reward is very low for the first couple of episodes. And then after the tuning has happened, you can see the reward also gradually smoothed out. This is another indication that there's no overfitting happening and there's actual progress taking place in the system. Now I'm gonna run the testing procedure and let's compare it with the original problem. You can see that the same crossroads has opened up and the quality of traffic signal has significantly improved. You can see that there is very less waiting time for the vehicles that are involved in the process and also the queue length has also been improved. Now another thing, interesting thing to note that we are again following the same cyclic order that was in the original problem but the duration of those individual cycles is altered by the algorithm so that is what has made the difference. Now this is no more a static traffic crossroad this is a dynamic one that changes according to the density of vehicles present. This is we believe this is what is needed for the future. Now since we've trained this model for the particular crossroad with certain parameters, this can be trained for any crossroad with different parameters and different models to achieve suitable results. Now let us have a look at the plots for the testing results. Let's have a look first at the queue plot. So you can see that the average length of the queue has undergone a significant improvement. Here in the worst case itself is only close to 10 vehicles at a particular intersection for the testing set. Now moving, moving on to rewards, also you can see that in this case even there are positive rewards which means that our system has performed really well and has gotten positive rewards as well. Now I'm saying this because if we remember correctly in the training phase the best reward was itself something negative, something close to minus 50 or minus 30 but in this case we can see that the best reward is minus 200. System has performed better on the testing set. So now there was a concern raised in the previous review that we had to do more real world maps and that crossroad was too conventional for our project. Hence we decided to go ahead and look up actual maps. So this is a map of Gandhipuram. We've imported this into Sumo and we've modeled uh, the base Sumo model after it. So you can see this is the exact same map. The Gandhipuram map has been imported into Sumo with certain commands and certain codes and has been done so. Now, now this you can see this is the end. This is the Gandhipuram 100 feet flyover that's happening over, that's, that's shown on the screen. And if we run this, we can see this as actual traffic flow that's happening. So the system can be extended to real world scenarios and real world maps also. This is just the base model. However, the training and the testing model have to be defined separately because this is quite a tedious task because there are ennum innumerable number of intersections and possibilities to consider. Hence, we reserve this part of a project for the next review. Now to show another example of the extensibility of our system, we decided to take the open map. This is the Ukodam Periokulam and this is the map that ensues it also. If we're going to import this into our Sumo model using certain commands and certain codes, we've already done that and let me show you that configuration file right now. This is the Sumo configuration file for Ukodam. As you can see there are more number of intersections and roads over here but even this works properly with the Sumo configuration. 
So you can see that it is the exact same map used and this is the junction that is near the Periculum Lake and near the bus stand. I'll be running the code to show you the inflow and outflow of vehicles that's happening. As you can see the signals have automatically been detected and accordingly vehicle movement has also been captured properly. There is proper inflow and outflow. Hence this proves the extensibility that our system can be extended to any map all around the world.